Hello, folks. Long time no see. Uh, I hope you are all doing really, really well. In my last video, I talked about uh, IntelliJ GoLand and how it is like really, really good for Go, de Go development. And it is. Uh, but I also said that uh, like I would try it for 30 days, like the length of the free trial license. And if I find it to be still good, I will buy it. And if I don't, I will move back to NeoVim or maybe even v uh, VS Code. So from the title of the video, you probably already know that I didn't buy it. Okay. A lot of people asked me to do a follow up on that video. So I thought I will take this chance to talk about that and also my whole like development workflow. So let's go. Before I jump into uh, TMaxim and all of that stuff, uh, let me just briefly, briefly say like how I like switch applications, how, how I go to a particular application and stuff like that, and like how I organize uh, them, them in a general sense. All of my primary applications like live in, uh, on their own dedicated uh, virtual desktop. Uh, let me show you this actually. So something like this. Here you can see a bunch of desktops and all of the desktop is populated with my main with my main application. So for example, desktop one is Slack, desktop two is my browser, I use Arc for browsing, then it's my uh, Alacrity terminal emulator, VS Code, and then uh, Obsidian. And what I also done is like, uh, for each application, I dedicated a specific shortcut. So I can jump to an application without doing command tab or alt tab and stuff like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. I want to go straight to a particular application that I need. So for example, here I am in my note application, Obsidian. Then I want to go to Slack. I go straight to Slack. Then back to notes. Then I need my browser. Then I need my like editor and stuff like that. You see the point. I don't need to do this. I really don't like this. And all of these shortcuts are under my home row fingers. So it is like really, really efficient to move. And how I, how I achieve this, it is uh, using Raycast. So for example, here you can see Alacrity is my hyper key D, hyper key S for Arc. Uh, what else do I have? Obsidian is hyper, hyper key G. And what is hyper key? That is basically a key that will trigger all of the modifiers. So for example, in this case, it is like control, alt, shift, and, and uh, command. Why this is useful is because there is no application that will require you to, to hit all of the modifiers for some, for some uh, shortcut. If you use that application, you probably should uninstall it. Of course, you cannot, like almost physically, you cannot, you cannot uh, press all of these modifiers. That is where the hyper key comes in and it is basically ability to hit one key that will trigger that will trigger all of these modifiers. You can do it in your configurable keyboards or you can do it in software. And here on uh, Mac OS, I use Carabinian Elements to configure my keyboards. Here you can see I have these complex modifications. And here you can see that I have map right command to hyper. So basically, when I, when I press right command key on my keyboard, it will trigger all of these modifiers. So my right, right command key is my hyper key, basically. And now with that said, let's talk about Tmax, Vim and VS Code. Okay, now I'm inside Alacrity. Alacrity is my terminal application of choice. I think it is the fastest one out there. And like it renders all of the fonts and stuff like that really, really nicely. Tmax, I'm pretty sure you're all more or less familiar with, with, with Tmax, uh, but, and I will not go like in depth into it. What is, what, what is it? There is a lot of uh, material uh, about that, but in a nutshell, it is a way to multiplex many different terminal sessions uh, within a single terminal session. Okay. So here I have, I have Alacrity and Alacrity doesn't support, for example, tabs, splitting panes and stuff like that. But with Tmax, you don't need it. Let me show you briefly. So if I just type Tmax, I just created a Tmax session. And here I, I can like split panes uh, horizontally, split them vertically. Okay, check stuff, resize them, move between them, close them, 
close them and stuff like that. Besides that, I can create new windows. This is like, if, if you can see that uh, this status bar, it is, uh, windows is like a tab, okay? I can create a new one. I can jump between the last two. I can also detach from a session and I can do like a uh, Tmax list sessions and I can see a single session that is running. How I usually uh, use it, I will create a new session like this session. I will tag it like IP in you know, Panjic. Now I will jump to a particular project that I'm working on. I will use this alias and I can go to extra DB operator just like that. I'm inside uh, XDB cluster operator project and you can see when I jumped to this directory it automatically renamed the window or tab so I know where uh, where I am right and here I will like usually do something like this in the upper pane I will open k9s to check all of my pods and what is going on uh, in the in the cluster I will resize it like this and in this pane I will like usually monitor logs like that okay and here I I can like deploy uh, deploy the cluster like this and I will start monitoring the logs okay here I can see the pods are being created. I can, of course, move between everything. In this pane, I will, I will like check some other stuff that I need to, that I need to check, like mm, get stateful sets. Okay, cool. I can also zoom in on a pane. So I, I just, I'm now looking only a single pane. I can zoom back and go back to the previous. And also with the help of FZF, I can do something like this search through my commands like this I can do like exec into pxe zero pod like this okay cool now I'm inside uh, mysql pod like this one pxe zero okay I can do like stuff that I need to do right cool for all of the quick uh, like config updates and stuff like that I will use NeoVim inside the terminal. So, for example, I can check all of the configs, okay, like this. Or when I need to look something up in a different project, I will open a new window. I will jump to a particular project that I need, okay, I'm here. I will jump to a go, to a controller, and here I can do whatever I want. Uh, for my NeoVim configuration, I'm using AstroVim uh, distribution. Uh, I really like it. All of the default config is like almost perfect for me. I just tweak something, add a couple of additional plugins and I'm, I'm good to go. So for example, here as well, I can, I can like jump to definition. I can go back. I can check all of the references, go to the references. I can search for files, of course, like this. Cool, all good. But regardless of this, there are some like pain points that I have. And for my like long uh, programming sessions, right now VS Code is like my primary editor. So let me show you. Here is VS Code. So first requirement for any editor that I, that I could use uh, besides uh, Vim or NeoVim is like that it, it has a really, really good Vim plugin because here you can see I'm also using Vim to, or Vim motions to manipulate text, text to, to, to edit text and stuff like that, right? So VS Code has really, really good Vim support and it, prob like it most certainly doesn't support everything that Vim supports, uh, but it has everything I need and that is good, good enough for me. What you can also notice here is like, I like it to have really, really minimum uh, setup I don't use tabs. I use like recent files to jump around and stuff like that. And of course I can like, I don't know, go to definition. I can check the references 
okay cool i can jump to uh to beginning of, of the function so if i mean if i'm in the middle of a function i can or, or a method i can jump to the beginning of, uh, of the of the of the function so i can do like this okay cool i can go through all of the symbols inside the file i can of course split the panes uh, i can go i can see all of the problems okay i can go to, to the explorer and stuff like that here i move with j and k okay i can add a new file like this with hitting r i can replace the file with hitting like d i can delete the file and of course i can hide everything and also i can jump quickly to my last uh, opened projects so i can do something like this so you can probably ask like why just not use NeoVim because everything that I showed you can more or less do in, in, in NeoVim uh, without without like like any issues, and there are a couple of things there are a couple of things that I like here more uh, more than than in using like NeoVim inside inside the uh, terminal. First of all, is like all of this UI UX look and feel of, of VS Code. I I all of the line spacing, uh, all of the, all of the, I don't know, little details like, for example, here, you can see how nicely presented I can do something like this. It feels more modern, at least to me. The second thing is like simple scrolling. So, of course, most of the time I will use keyboard to scroll like this or move page up, page down and stuff like that. But more often than not, I will, I, I will, lean back right and i will use my mouse to scroll okay nothing n nothing special here and my primary problem with scrolling inside neovim is like i cannot do this i cannot horizontally scroll with my mouse like that is really I, I don't know man <laughs> i don't know man so i'm like so if you jump back to neovim let's split the screen nothing happens okay and it is really, really annoying for me. So I'm like laid back, scroll around, need to scroll vertically. I need to go, I need to jump to my keyboard and uh, go to the end of the line and stuff like that. And also, and this is especially uh, visible on, on, on my laptop, uh, on, on, on the trackpad, is this like choppy scroll. Like it is not, it is not smooth. It is not, I don't know like old school it <laughs> feels old school right and when i jump here smooth smooth really nice really nice and like i said this is especially visible when you use the trackpad uh, rather than a regular mouse the other thing is like search history so i can jump to search all and with control j and control i i can move between all of the all of my search history uh, maybe it is me i'm not sure but uh, with telescope uh, that is used in in, in even to search everything search history is like a bit cumbersome right uh, i don't i don't i don't have something like this so when you when you for example when i go to go to recently searched files and stuff like that it like bundles everything not just a particular project but like everything across all the all of the projects I don't know maybe it's me maybe like you can tweak it uh, configure it i wouldn't be surprised if you can but i don't know i couldn't i couldn't make it work what also i like is this inline git blame i really like this at a glance i can see where this particular line came, came from and not just that but i can like hover over it like this and j can jump to a pr that introduced this change this is really, really convenient. And also, what I really like is that, for example, when I want to share something uh, with my colleagues on Slack, like this particular line, I can do something like this, open file at GitHub. I can hit this and it, it will open a file directly inside GitHub and I can share that line, particular line in Slack or something like that. So really, really nice, really cool. I like that a lot. And last, and but certainly not least, for me, at least, VS Code is like way, way more stable. So more often than not, uh, when I update something in, in AstroVim or, or update some, some plugin on, and some, something similar, it can break. 
it can break and I really hate debugging Lua code. I don't like it. I don't want to do it. But in contrast with, with, with VS code, that, that thing never happened to me. It's like really, really stable. And I like that. And now you can also ask like, why didn't I use Goland? Why didn't I stick to it? Why, why I didn't end up using it? A uh, couple of things. First of all, VS Code and Vim like have superior configurability over, over uh, IntelliJ. This is especially when it comes to shortcuts. Let me show you this. So for example, here, when I go to the Explorer, with only using J and K, I can move around. With pressing A, I can add a file. With, I don't know, pressing D, I can delete a file. Something like this you cannot, you cannot have in, in GoLand. So for every shortcut in GoLand, you have to, you have to use some, some kind of modifier. Control, command, and all of the combinations. You cannot have something like this. So this is like superior, superior in that sense. Also, there are a lot more plugins for VS Code and, and, and Vim when you compare it to, to, to GoLand. Like way, way, way more plugins. Another thing is like GoLand is like really, really, really heavy, really, really heavy application. It uses a lot of memory and a lot of resources in general. So to be honest, to go with GoLand, you need to have a pretty beefy machine, to be honest. And when you compare that to Vim or VS Code, like they do all of, this, all of the same things and even more, and they like way, way, way more lightweight, snappier, faster in all, of, in all regards. And last but certainly not least, like I already mentioned and showed, like Goland, at least for me, does not provide anything that I don't have in Vim or VS Code. And they are free. Right, so Goland costs money. I think at about one hundred fifty dollars for a year or something like that. I'm not sure, but something like that. Okay, why would I pay it? And also, I need to say this: if it really provided me benefits, I wouldn't hesitate to buy it. But it simply does not. It simply does not. So there you go, guys. Uh, I hope like this was some somehow beneficial, useful f uh, for you. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss uh, a similar videos like this. So until the next time, take care and bye bye.